All right, I've seen the analytics, so I know we're pretty much on the same side of YouTube. Have you guys seen those videos about how software engineers would learn how to code if they had to start all over again? Yeah, those. I almost made one before I realized that most of them don't actually talk about how they would find a job after they learned how to code. So naturally, the topic of today's video is how I would find my first software engineering job if I had to start over again. All right, welcome back. When I landed my first full-time software engineering gig, I was ecstatic, but I wasn't surprised because I knew I'd get it. Not because I'm arrogant or anything like that, but because I quite literally had no other choice. Getting that first role felt like life or death because at the time I had no real safety net. So I threw everything at one goal until I finally succeeded. You've already read the title of this video, so you know where I'm going with this. And if your algorithm looks anything like mine, then you've definitely seen other devs on YouTube talk about what they would do differently if they had to do it all over again. So it got me thinking, what would I do differently? Especially if I had to find a job in 2024. But hang on, hang on. Before we get to that, I kind of have to tell you how I got my first job in the first place. And I don't really want to make this video too long, so I'll give you the clip note. Okay, so I first learned to code back in my senior year of high school. Nothing too impressive, just some basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Well, not even JavaScript, I actually learned jQuery at the time, which was just enough to help me create some small crappy web pages. But it got my gears turning and it kept me interested. Once I got good enough, the program that I was in placed me at a startup called Thrillist for an internship for two months that summer. But at this point, 17 year old me didn't realize that the skills that I had learned in high school would actually be very useful later. No, I didn't even know that they were lucrative to begin with. So instead of pursuing that, I became a physics major. Yeah, I know, but wait, it gets worse. I actually reached out to that same program that I attended in high school to asked them if they could help me find another internship, but not because I wanted to pursue coding. I just wanted a job so I could get some money. So they got me an internship at a startup called Pinch Me to help pay for my physics degree. Yeah, for whatever reason, my brain didn't really process how stupid that was. But once I got past all of those arduous calculus and physics classes, I realized in my third year that what I was doing was really unsustainable. In order to afford college, I needed to work more, but the more I worked, the more my grades started to suffer. And right as I had this realization, I ended up getting an email from someone that worked at that program that I went to in high school. Yes, they're literally a big part and how I got here. I basically got invited to a boot camp called the Marcy Lab School. It was completely free and they provided me with a laptop and everything, but the catch was I'd have to be in the inaugural class and it would be a full-time commitment. And, and at this point I was determined to make something of myself, even if it meant I had to carve a new path out. So I took a leap of faith and I dropped out of college. Quick side note, I didn't actually tell anyone in my family that I dropped out of college because I knew they'd be disappointed. But my mom ended up finding out anyway because she saw me getting interviewed about it in the news. 20 year old Devante Duncan of Crown Heights, Brooklyn is part of the inaugural class. He's putting college on hold to spend the next year here as a calculated financial move. In my first semester of my third year, I took out a $2,000 loan and I kind of just realized that this route of education is completely unsustainable for me personally. Yeah, she wasn't the happiest camper when she found out I wasn't going back to college, but she's proud of me now that everything worked out. I then spent pretty much a year mass applying to hundreds of roles at random companies with my noob level resume, hoping that someone would give me one shot to get my foot in the door in tech. Now, 75% of the way through the boot camp, I attended a networking event where I met this guy who happened to be the V VP of engineering at Weight Watchers. I told him my story and I expressed my interest at working at his company. And the next thing I knew, I was in touch with a recruiter. And this moment was basically flashpoint for me. It's kind of crazy how one interaction with one person pretty much launched my career in tech. I managed to get through the interview process and I landed an internship at Weight Watchers. And now while I was there, there's one piece of advice that Rodney gave me that I truly believe gave me the edge over the other candidates. It told me to stay hungry. It's easy to do the bare minimum and coast by, but if you want a chance at a full-time role, you have to at least attempt to add value. So that's what I did. I worked as hard as I could to pull my weight, show that I'm excited to learn and ask for feedback. And in the end, I was offered a full-time role and of course I accepted it. On the outside looking in, it looks like I did pretty much everything I was supposed to do. I learned to code, I networked, I got an internship, that led to a full-time job. But the difference here is, if I did exactly what I did in 2019, now, in 2024, I doubt I'd have as much luck. Luck being the key word here. Back in 2019, every company was hiring as though they were literally printing money. They were all focused on growth and most software engineers could have their pick of the lot. However, now it's an entirely different ball game. Companies are shedding fat with record layoffs to preserve and increase profitability, all in the name of appeasing investors. Needless to say, this is not an employee's market. So let's start back at the top and talk about what I would actually do differently now. So back when I was in that bootcamp, I spent a lot of time 
working at my part-time job instead of actually building projects. And in hindsight, the projects I worked on were interesting and ambitious, but they lacked technical depth. Every project I built felt like a basic MVP rather than a fully fleshed out product. And looking back, had I picked up less shifts and tried to focus more on building those projects, I think my portfolio would currently be a lot more impressive than it is, which is exactly what I think I would need now in order to stand out amongst a sea of engineers who are also looking for roles. And having an impressive project to actually call upon and talk about when you're speaking with hiring managers or even other engineers or recruiters, it's a good way to stand out and be memorable. I honestly feel like I wasted a lot of time just blindly applying to roles and submitting hundreds of applications with pretty much just the same generic resume. And I doubt my resume actually stood out anywhere considering even in 2019, it had what percent success rate at actually getting me a call back during what was probably the best time to get a job in tech. So if I were applying now, I would try to be a lot more intentional about every single application I submit. Now, I know some of you guys hate sponsors, but if you're currently job hunting, I think this one is actually going to be of value to you. The folks over at JobRight reached out and asked me to tell you about this new AI powered job searching tool with access to over 80,000 new job listings provided daily, specifically in tech and some other professional industries. After a few minutes of using it, I kind of knew almost immediately that this would be valuable to you guys. Basically, you start by uploading your resume and answering a few questions about who you are and what kind of roles you're looking for. And once you get past this step, something magical happens. You're met with hundreds of roles curated specifically for you alongside an actual score that describes how closely matched your experience is with the job listing. Now, if I were job searching again, I would use this platform for three specific reasons. Well, four actually. So being that job right constantly scrapes the web, to ensure that you're receiving the newest listings. Being the first to apply is gonna give you a pretty big leg up when it comes to actually trying to get your application seen. And with applicant numbers looking like this, you could use all the help you can get. The second thing is the best way to get your resume noticed is to try and match the job listing itself as closely as possible. And JobRite makes this much easier by providing you information about what your resume has and what it doesn't have in relation to each job that you're looking at. I take advantage of this and try to customize every single resume that you send out to every single application. Yes, it would take longer, but quality over quantity will pay dividends in the end. And it definitely helps that there's actually an AI agent called Orion that can help you figure out what to change or highlight on your resume to help you get noticed. And then there's the third thing. The first time around, I wasted hours of my time pretty much just scrolling through completely unrelated listings just to find the ones that fit what I was actually looking for. And even then, I still ended up applying to a bunch of jobs that I knew I probably didn't qualify for and would never get a call back from. So JobRite's AI curated list makes it a lot much easier to avoid that predicament. So that's a big value add for me. There's also a new exclusive feature called Insider Connection that recommends company insiders that you can reach out to and gain insights or maybe even referrals. This is an easy way to give some direction to your networking endeavors. Now, 10 out of 10, I would definitely recommend that you guys go try this out. You can find detailed and centralized information about each company that matters from funding history and recent news to H1B sponsorship patterns on what kind of roles have been sponsored in the past. Click on the link in the description and you can try it out for yourself completely free. You know, in retrospect, I think I could have done a lot more to prepare for technical interviews. I had a tendency back then to sidestep a lot more of the complex topics like binary trees and matrices. And instead, I focused a lot more on practicing the questions that I thought were more commonly asked. However, in light of recent information, it's clear that nowadays you need to be prepared to tackle pretty much any question they throw at you. The market for jobs in the tech industry has become increasingly competitive. And as a result, many companies have resorted to elevating the difficulty of their interview processes. Hell, I actually saw an application that had an IQ test on it, which is kind of weird. Either way, if I was on the hunt now, I'd hop on these websites and grind on all of the hard questions. It would be a hellish endeavor, but if you want to make the cut, you have to set the bar for yourself way higher than it is for everyone else. Also, I get a lot of people asking whether or not certifications are worth it. And I think they definitely can be if you're applying to jobs that are specifically looking for those. But looking back, I still don't think I would have invested in one. Although it might look good on your resume, cost value comparison doesn't look so good when you actually make the comparison between that and actual experience on another candidate's resume that you're in competition with. So if I'm being completely honest, if I could snag a few for free, I'd probably go for it. Today's market is tough, so anything you can do to get noticed is probably worth it. It's gonna take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to land that first role. Good luck to all of you guys out there. And if you have any questions or you just wanna to talk to me in general, feel free to jump on my Discord. I'll leave the link in the description. Until next time, good luck and thanks for watching.